Hey, it's Rassicas, and this is part three of my band lore series. That means there's, you know, two other parts I'd recommend you watch first to get the whole story. Anyways, this video will be covering wave three on this timeline, which is the Splatoon 2 music from version 3.0.0 onward, starting with the return of Chirpy Chips, which I already talked about in part one. But after I finished the part 2 video in this series, I actually translated an article from the Haikata Walker art book and found one more Chirpy Chips tidbit that I'd figure I'd mention real fast. So the band has their own personal clothing stylist because, you know, they're famous, and he is an adult university graduate octoling named Woody Kawahagi. I'm not sure if he still works as their stylist, but at least at one point he did. So soon after version 3.0.0 came Octo Expansion and more music followed from there. To start things off, the artist behind much of the music in Octo Expansion, Deadfish. Deadfish was an Octoling who was previously a promising up-and-coming DJ. So her stage name, Deadfish, is likely a play on Dead Mouse. And with Deadfish being a stage name, that means she has a real name, which is Mizuta Ahato. Diligent, hardworking, and seriously devoted to music, she'd spend most of her day making and mixing tracks. Rather than thinking about what she'd want others to hear, she'd just give form to what came out of her inner self without worrying about what others would think. Since she learned every genre of music and was able to play a diverse array of music that could fit any scenario, her music was described as mimetic. One day, all contact with her was lost, and her current whereabouts are unknown. At least, unknown to those who knew her. In her pursuit of breakbeat perfection, it eventually led her to a subterranean test facility where she was sanitized. Though little of her former self remains, she continues DJing, and the halls of the test facility echo with her tracks to this day. In an interview, Splatoon art director Seito Inoue says that the music in Octo Expansion was originally intended as general background music, so he wasn't planning on attaching a character to it. But he really liked the music, so I guess that's how Deadfish was created. And I think her not being planned to exist as a character is an explanation for why her music varies so much. And speaking a bit more about her music, sound director Toromi Nigishi was asked about the name of Deadfish's songs. He says that some of the song names may be related to the gameplay on the stages where the song is playing, or they're totally unrelated and were named after the sort of feeling that the song gives off. He also brought up the numbers of the tracks. I think many Deadfish fans are aware that while her tracks are numbered, there's several numbers that are missing. All Minigishi had to say about the track numbers was that they're numbered in the order that she made them. So, assuming Deadfish didn't just skip numbers for a stylistic reason, I think it's reasonable to assume that Deadfish did actually make tracks number 3, 7, 10, and so on, and maybe she forgot them when she was sanitized. Or sanitization made her forget how to count. I'll leave you guys to make the theories for that. There's one little tidbit about Deadfish I'll mention in the Sashimori section later on, but moving on for now to another Octarian musician from a single-player mode. Turquoise October Turquoise October produces music that is broadcasted to control the Octarian army. The sound of this music is described as diligent, totally different than Inkling music, and comprised of weird sound sources. In Splatoon 2, some of the songs sampled Squid Sister songs, playing them backwards, referencing Callie's brainwashing. <laughs> the music is composed by DJ Octavio and his direct subordinates. The identities of these subordinates exactly are unknown, but the songs use a similar sound to Octarian voices, and the album covers are of Octo Troopers, so that's all we have to clue us in. Turquoise October, of course, the word October includes the word Octo, so Octopus, so that's a possibility for their name origin. But the name may be a reference to Tom Clancy's novel, The Hunt for Red October. It may also be a reference to the American alternative rock band, Blue October, with turquoise being a different kind of blue. The first album cover seems to reference The Man Machine by Kraftwerk, and the album art in Splatoon 2 resembles the Multiplies album cover from Yellow Magic Orchestra. 
So agents three and four hear their music because for some reason it has been cross-talked into their headphones. But those with a keen eye may have noticed Turquoise October posters in Inkopolis, like how do the Inklings know about this Octarian band? The Splatoon album jacket seems to give an answer. Apparently, Turquoise October has a long history in Inkopolis. There's one story with debated authenticity that it started a few decades ago, when some nerd picked up a signal playing their music with an old model radio. Either way, those sounds were repeatedly copied and secretly shared among music fans. But what brought Turquoise October into the spotlight was a broadcast signal intrusion of Inkopolis Tower on November 6, 2014 of the Mollusk Era. By the way, this is the same day where the single-player trailer for Splatoon was first revealed. The kids of Inkopolis, who didn't show any interest in the vanishing of the Great Zapfish, couldn't help but listen to the roaring music they'd never heard before. That song that was playing was Tentacular Circus. Fortunately, in short time, the music source was found in a trash bin next to Inkopolis Tower, and it was re-released into a proper album. Well, not really a proper album because it's a pirated version of the original compilation. I feel like I should mention the theory of Marina being a former member of Turquoise October, most notably because the Ebb and Flow demo bears some similarity to songs by Turquoise October, as it has the same burp-like bass sounds heard in many songs, and the same jingle from the beginning of Eight-Legged Advance and Octo Eight-Step. <laughs> Also, the tips of Marina's tentacles are turquoise in color. While there's nothing that's mentioned in her military history about her working under Octavio as a musician, and for all we know she was just sampling Turquoise October's music for the Ebb and Flow demo, it's still a cool idea, I think. Oh, and speaking of those Octarian musical motifs, a surprising place and can be heard is from the horn sounds of the cars driven by Scrappers and Salmon Run. <laughs> This is because the scrapper cars are partially built from Octarian shields, as the Salmonids and Octarians have a trade agreement. Following the events of Octo expansion, the Inklings world has changed a bit, with all these Octolings mingling with Inkling society. Hisashi Nogami says that in line with this, Octoling artists have been expanding their activities. Since the Octolings have different musical roots, the Inklings feel it's a new experience for them. This ties in with the last two artists of Wave 3. The first of these is Dispair. On a tour overseas, the extremely popular beatsmith Warabi had a chance encounter with Squid Squad's Econ, and the two became a mismatch made in heaven. Though from an outsider's standpoint, it looked like they were just trying to fight each other. With Econ's loud and punkish vocals and bass playing reacting with Warabi's sharp and catchy electronic beats, they craft music with high tension and a one-of-a-kind edge. Warabi is an Octoling EDM track maker. His name likely comes from a kind of fern that's eaten in Japan, most famously made into a starch that's used to create the dessert, Warabi Mochi. He's traveled to 20 different countries in a year and has had many successful world tours. As mentioned in the Japanese dialogue for Fan vs. Friends, he even performed together with Marina. Both of his parents are famous actors, and from a young age he listened to musical styles from all over the world. He grew up with a classical music education for gifted children, but became obsessed with music production software in his teens and garnered fame for remixing top artists. Warabi says that guys in a band generally have this giving-in sort of relationship, so they can't speak about anything but we make songs all while pointing out each other's faults and not even meeting face to face. It's the whole package. And live? Have you seen that we don't even make eye contact? And this other person that Warabi is referring to here is Ikan. He was the bassist of Squid Squad. He disliked how little tension and how agreeable everyone was in Squid Squad during the songwriting process, which leads to a very likely theory as to why the band suddenly broke up at the height of their popularity. But his metal-influenced hard bass lines and vocals are still going strong. Even though Warabi is younger, Ikon has faith in him, saying, His demands seem all over the place, but he's really clever and intelligent. One last fun fact, 
The Japanese name of despair is gashokuin, which is a concept for food that just should not be eaten together, whether it be taste or texture or superstition. One of these foods that famously applies to this in Japan is eel and umeboshi, which is what's featured on Ikon's shirt. <laughs> Sashimori is the other band that sprung up at around the same time as Dispair. The name Sashimori is short for Sashimi Moriwase or Assorted Sashimi, something that is prominent on their logo and album cover. Sashimori was originally a loud rock band composed of four people, a vocalist, a guitarist, a bassist, and a drummer. However, three of them opposed the vocalist's self-centered and dictator-like personality and kicked them out of the band. Hisashi Nogami was asked in an interview if this vocalist was Pearl, which he replied with, leave it to your imagination. So, probably, yeah. Well, after that vocalist was kicked, the three worked as an instrumental trio, but they all felt something was missing. Then a genius 10-year-old boy DJ discovered a tweet calling for the recruitment to the trio of members, and he replied. At first, the band gave a laugh, but with how he used the chopped voice samples instead of vocals, they greatly admired the boy's raw musical talent and made his work a driving force of the band's sound. They were reborn as a quartet with their own unique colors. The first of these members of this quartet is Carla. Carla is a scaly foot gastropod and the bassist. When Carla was in the band that preceded Sashimori, her ironclad body made her the only one able to withstand the previous singer's powerful death metal voice. Carla is very silent, even in interviews, but doesn't seem to have bad intentions. When she's eating, nothing can be seen, so how she gets nutrition is wrapped in mystery. Her age is unknown. Now something interesting to note is that Carla was originally designed as a passenger for the Deep Sea Metro. Like, this design was scrapped for the DLC and repurposed to make her a band member. In the concept art, she's described as an ironclad older sister type, and that she gives off a slightly scary feeling of illegality. Whatever the hell that means. Next member of this band is Taichi Sawaberu. They are a large head hair tail, or cutlass fish, and a very skillful and precise guitarist, which is a bit of a mystery to me with those arms. Taichi's name is likely a play on the Japanese word for cutlass fish, Tachiuo. Their last name, Sawaberu, is also another word for cutlass fish in Japanese. They have an instrumental background, but started the band after becoming interested in incorporating accompanied singing. When Paul, the young DJ, first joined the band, Taichi had a negative reaction to it, saying, geez, this guy is young and tiny and awful, but now their mind has changed. Taichi is also a prestigious studio musician and does a wide range of activities outside of the band. Ryu Cheng is a 35-year-old koi carp and the band's drummer. The word Ryu means dragon, so Ryu Cheng's name is likely a reference to that famous legend about a carp climbing a waterfall and becoming a dragon. This is doubly backed up in their description, where it's mentioned that Ryu Cheng's tempestuous and reputable drumming style has been compared to a climbing dragon. Ryu Cheng comes from the base of a Mount Nantai in an area with a mountain stream. They grew up in a prestigious home, but went hardcore during their teenage years, dedicating themselves to punk rock. They enjoy illustration as a hobby, and designed the band's mascot, Mr. Wasabi. They play Rainmaker on a team with Kuze and Blow. Paul is a 10-year-old octoling DJ and turntablist of the band. His name may be a reference to a famous octopus of the same name, Paul, who successfully predicted the outcome of many soccer matches during his life from 2008 to 2010. He has crazy good mixing skills, which is hard to imagine for a 10-year-old, and he samples artists such as DJ Octavio and DJ Real Soul, along with ancient sound sources. Said ancient sound sources are described as not sounding like the voices of sea creatures, implying that they are human records. His favorite foods are kelp and biscuits. A piece of text in Haikata Walker also has some notes about there being ties between Deadfish, Paul, and Marina from Off the Hook. The passage notes that Deadfish and Paul have the same thing on their hats, questioning whether they're blood relatives or if they just like the same brand. It also mentions that because Deadfish and Marina are both DJs, it wouldn't be too surprising if they performed together in the past. And to loop a final connection, the Japanese Family vs. Friends dialogue mentions that Marina and Paul know each other as they did a DJ event together, alongside Warabi, as I mentioned earlier. There sure are a lot of octoling DJs, huh? 
So that's it for Wave 3, but that doesn't mean I'm done here. If I'm gonna talk about Splatoon bans, I'm gonna be thorough, and I have a couple more things to say. First off, I want to talk about a Splatoon advertisement for Koto Koto magazine that really caught my eye. Or ear. For those unfamiliar, Koto Koto is a Japanese magazine that hosts the official Splatoon manga, and is behind that Japanese exclusive gear that people complain about. So they seem to have ties to the official Splatoon team. They released an advertisement for one of their DLC gear sets, the Emperor Gear, and they chose some interesting music. If you've played a lot of Splatoon, you may recognize that this song does not appear in-game, despite sounding distinctly Splatoon-y. And if you're like me, you may be asking yourself, why did this not make it in-game? I mean, I'd imagine some of you guys agree with me that this song rules. But after doing some thinking, I think I have a theory for why it was cut. So I think that this is supposed to be a Squid Squad song. While it's a bit edgier sounding than what Squid Squad songs we've gotten before, what really tips me off to this are the deep vocals. That's definitely Econ's voice. As I was reading through the interviews about the music of Splatoon, the developers talked about how they wanted to show the times changing in the Splatoon world, and having the music reflect that. And well, Squid Squad kind of epitomizes the music of Splatoon 1. So maybe this song was created before the developers made that decision to have Squid Squad break up to reflect these changing times, and perhaps they later decided they wanted to use Econ's vocals in a different style. Note that this trailer was released at the end of 2017, so an entire 10 months before Dispair was revealed. And as for this decision for Squid Squad to break up, I mean it pretty loosely because the Splatoon music might not be composed with this active intent of creating a narrative for these fictional musicians, as the music is created first and then sent off to the artist to draw an album cover. So yeah, that's my thoughts on this mysterious Koro Koro song. After hearing this trailer, I thought to myself, does Koro Koro have other trailers for their gear that seems to have unused Splatoon music? The Spy Gear advertisement uses an Ink Theory song, so toss that aside, but the Mecha Gear... Unlike the Emperor gear, this doesn't sound like any of the known Splatoon bands. It sounds more like something from a Doom game. So if the other two trailers use what clearly sounds like Splatoon music, does this also count as Splatoon music? Or is this some music put together just for this promo? I really don't know, and I'm probably overthinking this. It's probably the latter. I'd love to have this kind of music in game though, because surely something like it exists in the Splatoon world. After all, the musicians that we hear in game are not the only bands that exist. And that leads me to the last thing I wanted to talk about. In a few places in Haikata Walker, some musicians have been mentioned with no known songs. There's a very few off-handed examples of this I can think of. One of these is an inner universe interview with the graffiti artist Sally, who was responsible for the dead clam graffiti around Agopolis. Aside from this graffiti, one of her notable credits is drawing an album cover for a musician or a musical group called Oi Star in the House for their album Oi Star. I'm going to assume this is an oyster that raps. Another obscure example can be seen on a CD that pops up in a few stations, with what appears to be an inkling idol with yellow tentacles. Unfortunately, there is zero information given about this character. 
some slightly more noteworthy examples come from the information given about the mini-CDs that can be seen in C14 Stick and Move Station. The description given for one of these CDs is that 20 years prior to the events of Octo Expansion, going off the assumption that time passes parallel to ours, this would have been around Mollusca in 1998, there was an unnamed folk rock band that exploded in popularity after being featured in the theme song of a famous drama. It continued to stay on the charts for two years, even after the drama ended, leaving many legends in the music scene. Although the band itself broke up, its members are still active in the music scene, and they can often be seen appearing in collaborations with various artists. The other one of these mini-CDs is for a highly successful Cuttlefish Idol duel, presumably from sometime during the 80s or 90s like the rest of the Octo Expansion things. One sang with a really high voice, and the other had a softer, whispering voice. Their unique tracks enraptured the teens of their day. They are both still involved in the music industry, providing music compositions and such. The cover pictured here is a super rare signed copy. There's one more, even more noteworthy, obscure artist to come out of Haikata Walker, DJ Sango. The story behind Sango is that in Octo Expansion, Agent 3 was originally planned to have taken up DJing, like how Captain Cuttlefish got into rapping. Agent 3 was originally planned to play a seemingly bigger role in Octo Expansion's story, so perhaps this is a way to give them some more characterization beyond them just being a silent former protagonist. Unfortunately, we haven't seen anything outside of Haikata Walker that mentions Agent 3 having a passion for DJing, so it's unclear if the idea of Sango was totally scrapped or if DJing is something 3 took up after Octo Expansion. I really hope it's some post-Octo Expansion thing because I want the Deep Sea Rave to be canon. If you watched my Iceberg video all the way through, you should be aware of this deep sea rave that I'm referring to. It's explained in a passage in Haikata Walker, and the meat of this passage is that Sango and Marina had an eight hour long DJ battle, Pearl and Captain Cuttlefish had a rap battle full of unairable and unprintable language, and then there's like the fact that a ridiculous number of people showed up, like 60 million or billion, like the number they used is not even a real number, but apparently so many showed up that the water level rose by 30 centimeters, and several people were so engrossed in this insane DJ and rap battles that were going on that they forgot to return to the surface and many just went missing. Yeah, that's the most interesting parts of that passage, but I'm here to talk about obscure Splatoon band members. And recently I actually went and translated the whole passage myself, and there's some mentions of other Splatoon bands other than Off the Hook. So this rave is one of the largest in the Inkopolis region, and it's called the Low Water Party, or as the Inklings call it, the LWP. The name was written in English, by the way. And when people arrived at this rave, out of nowhere, a mix of music that gave off a mimetic feeling could be heard, signaling the start of the party. She didn't show up, but at that moment, everyone at this party was convinced that those beats had come from none other than Deadfish, who had disappeared in the deep sea a while back. So Deadfish was there, even if nobody saw her, so that's cool. Then after that, major artists started appearing one after another at this event, such as DJ Octavio featuring Callie, there was Bob Dub, and there was an impromptu appearance from the Rainmaker team, Underpass Bass Drum, and the audience got hyped up when a member of that group said, now, I'm playing the double bass for the first time today, so forgive me if it doesn't sound the best. So I was surprised to read that, you know, Blo, Kuze, and Ryu Chang not only play the Rainmaker, but actually perform together as their own musical act. Unfortunately, it wasn't said which one of them got into playing the double bass. I think it'd be neat if the three of them actually showed up as their own musical group in a future Splatoon game. And so with that, that is the end of part three of the Band Lore series. Thank you to my patrons for directly funding my Splatoon insanity. As mentioned in the first video, I've been translating a large percentage of information either by myself or I had a heavy hand in the process, so it's nice to get some, um financial compensation for what I've been doing. It would be cool to continue this Bandalore series with the part 4 with whatever musicians come about from Splatoon 3, but that would be something for a long time from now. But yeah, thanks for sticking with me through my ramblings and whatnot, I hope you enjoyed it.